Hey there, I'm Megan. I joined Avalanche about a week ago as a DevRel engineer, and now I'm trying to figure out how everything works. So I'm here at the core wallet, it's in beta version. It has this really nice home page with all of the different dApps you can interact with, um, big players in the ecosystem, subnets, you name it, Trader Joe, Benchy, got some pretty pretty big names here, and you know, just some news going on in the ecosystem, upcoming events you can participate in. RIP the intern, but today I'm going to try to use the Avalanche Bridge, so I'm going to go ahead and connect uh, my core wallet to the website version, and I've used the browser extension pretty often. It's my main way to interact in the ecosystem, but I thought it would be useful to show the bridge today just because I've never actually interrupted with the web page myself, um, given that I've only been working at AvLabs for about a week now. But um, So here's the main page. You can see all the assets I have locked up. Zero dollars of it is an avalanche, 60 bucks is an ecosystem of Ethereum, and about $50 is USDC. And I have about $10 worth of ETH, which I'll need for gas. When I'm using any bridge, you always need the native currency that exists on that blockchain in order to bridge your assets over. So I'm going to go over here to the bridge tab. I'm going to select my network. Right now, the core wallet looks like it supports avalanche, obviously. Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I'm going to select my USDC token here and I'm going to bridge it all over because I don't really have any use for it um, in Ethereum at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to get about $47 worth of USDC from this swap and the gas fee is going to take away some of that $50. Um, bit of shame. Doesn't make sense to me why my $50 of USDC is going to be eaten considering I have tokens to pay for gas, aka Ethereum. So we're going to go ahead and click bridge and looks like it's going to take a while, I guess. Um, I'm not an expert in why Ethereum bridging, bridging from Ethereum needs 96 block confirmations, but Avalanche only needs one. Um, from the likes of it, probably going to take like half an hour. So I'm going to go over and continue discovering the tools center. See what we got here. Looks pretty good. Got the wallet for interacting with the X and the P chain. Glacier API, network alerts. Got a lot of useful stuff, a lot of useful links here. Gonna go back and check in on the bridge. It's nice that it kind of keeps it in a tab so that, you know, you don't have to kind of navigate back to another link. You can leave and come back and know that you're bridge transaction still processing. I went ahead and I edited out all like 60 block confirmations um, to come back and see, but I also didn't even think to look maybe in the tools for some information on why it's gonna take 96 confirmations. Usually I'd ask ChatGBT, but I wanna see what the core platform here has for us. And it looks like they have a FAQ for avalanche bridging from Ethereum. Uh, it says it's going to take 20 minutes. Okay, that's good. That's how long it's been since I started. And why is Avalanche part of the transfer taking so long? Looks like that maybe sometimes it's just kind of glitchy. The product is still in beta, so let's see if we can get something a little bit more pointed, giving it more to work with. Bridge 96 confirmations. Oh, looks like we got an answer here. Confirmation requirements on Ethereum will change from 35 to 96. So it used to be 35 and now it's 96 post-merge. Back in last year of 2022, meaning that the time it'll take for transaction to be confirmed will increase from 8 to 19 minutes. The confirmation requirement post-merge was chosen by the Ethereum community based on a vote and then there's a link to more information in the ethereum foundation documents but i'm not gonna go through here let's see if we can find some reference okay no reference to 96 um but i don't think for the purposes of this i need to really know why okay looks like we have some more confirmations left it's only been 15 minutes um oh i skipped ahead for me and 
waiting here for the avalanche confirmation to complete. Nice. Okay, so in total, it took us 20 minutes to get the funds out of Ethereum and 20 seconds to get the funds onto Avalanche C Chain. And now the, you can see my profile that I have a little bit of AVAX from that transaction and I have my $47 worth of USDC. So I have pretty much all the funds that I had on Ethereum on Avalanche now in the form of either USDC or AVAX. So, and it used about $4.40 uh, of gas to bridge it over from Ethereum. So, got about $55 left. I used to have 60. Those $5 were taken mostly from Ethereum. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, I guess if you, you know, there's, you know, some parameters here that don't look quite right, but if you're ever curious, as to like the exact balance in your wallet, you can always go to Snowtrace uh, and type in your wallet here. Check to make sure that your transactions went through. Uh, if you don't feel like watching the bridging animations that were given to us, then you can probably just look right up in here um, for the transaction hash and the details there. You can see that four minutes ago, my value of USDC coin was transferred from Ethereum uh, to me via the avalanche bridge so like this transaction on snowtrace is just going to say bridge to my wallet because that's the only transaction my wallet sees but on etherscan and the address is the same as the address is on avalanche you'll see that um, the two transactions that exist in this wallet are the transaction where i got usdc from coinbase and then the transaction where i sent my usdc out to the avalanche bridge so and you can see all the balances there uh, in case you're ever concerned about like your funds or you think that there's something missing, you can use this information and do more of the math. But yeah, overall, I have to say I'm kind of impressed by the core web app. I really didn't know what to expect when I came in here and I really haven't ever had such an easy time bridging. I've uh, used a lot of bridges before uh, in demos like this one, but this was really nice and very user-friendly. So decently impressed.